Okay, off we go. So, we're sitting here in the Max Planck Institute on the German border within the Netherlands. And um, I'm Stephen Levinson, and uh, I'm Emeritus Director of this Institute. And I'm sitting here with Tim Leifeld, who has very kindly agreed uh, to be interviewed. And uh, there are a couple of reasons for doing this. I mean, one is just that I think uh, he's well known through all of his uh, books and other papers and so on. Um, but there's just a way in which uh, talking to people and, and, be, and, and informal remarks and memories are always bring things to life. So it's the sort of qualia, as Dennett would have said, the, the kind of lived experience that's, uh, yep. that is also missing from the written, the written works. So, and the other reason, though, is that Pym happens to have been, uh, of course, a, a very distinguished scholar, but, but in addition, um, it happens to have been uh, a participant in some of the most momentous uh, changes in intellectual history in our field. So, so he's met all sorts of people and so on, and so I, I think we should uh, just talk a little bit about some of those characters and about how, uh, how you came to do the work that you did. And I, I think I'm going to use just your biography as a kind of framework because it, so we can hang things off it <laughs> yeah. as we go along. Yeah. And so I wanted to start actually with your childhood because you were born uh, just before the Second World War. Right? Yeah, 38. Yeah. yeah, and so you lived through the dreadful hunger winter of uh, yes, 44. Yes, I, I still remember well. You do? Yeah. Yes, really? yes, yeah. yes, yes, you, yes. Is it true that you sort of lived on... That is very much true. Really? I mean, Gosh. the the last winter of the Second World War, the northern part of the Netherlands was totally closed off. The bridge to far story. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, so there was no food. Yeah. There was just no food. And m m my father was a chemist, and we had a laboratory back home. And he went out to the bulb fields. We lived close I see. to the bulb fields, and he collected some of the bulbs and then tested them whether they were poisonous. Oh, I see. I see. The pits were poisonous. So when you remove the pits, you had sort of onions. Yes. Sweet yes. onions. Yes. Yes. I see. And, and so <laughs> he bought a few yeah. cubic meters I of see. tulip bulbs, and that's what we ate over the winter, plus sugar beets, and that was it. Amazing. I I, you, you, I, you I was I was six, yeah. seven years yeah. old, yeah. and I I would eat them again. I loved them. <laughs> <laughs> they were <laughs> Swedish. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> yeah. So now t tell me, because it you it was a large family, right? Yeah. How many siblings actually? Uh, yeah, we were ten. Ten. Still By the end of the war, yes. we were nine. Yes. Yeah. 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 So both your parents were scientists. Yeah, my family. mother was yeah. a physicist, yeah. my father was a chemist, yeah. 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 And then, and now it, it turns out that many of the family ended up in science. How many actually? So there's, uh, there, 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 there were, so there were, I think, six or seven with an academic degree, and, yeah. and five of them became real scientists, yeah. and some, some of them were really in the top yeah. range, yes, yeah. Uh, especially my eldest sister. Yes. Who yes. became uh, an American yeah. in the end, uh, working at the NIST, the National Institute for Standards and Technology. Right. Uh, right. So the um, National Bureau of Standards, it used to be yeah. called. Yeah. And she, she right. worked there for the rest of her life. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yes, there was a mathematician. So who where were you in, in the birth order? So, uh, I, I'm number seven. I see, I see. <laughs> but, which was pretty good because my parents could manage to control all of us. Yeah. <laughs> Down the line, yeah, it was yes, pretty yes, safe. Yes, yes. Yeah. So there was a lot of sort of competition between the siblings. Uh, uh, somewhat, yeah. somewhat, but yeah. it was a very happy yeah. family. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Really a happy family yeah. Yeah. and uh, excellent parents. Yeah. 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 Anyway, so then you went to high school in yeah. Harlem. Harlem. Yeah, we lived in Heemstede, which is a suburb of Harlem. I see. Yeah. I see. And, and then went to University Leiden. of Leiden. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, and that was not remarkable. What did you study, actually? Psychology. Okay, I see. And it was yeah. awful. Yes. It was awful. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. really. 
um, except for one or two real great people. Mm. And my uh, supervisor, who became also my doctoral supervisor, was John van der Geer, and he was really great, very mm. broad, very sharp, mm. a good mathematical psychologist, mm. a good experimental psychologist. And uh, so th that was marvelous. In, in fact, he taught me mm. uh, psychology. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and that was made easy because after my return from Louvain, maybe we should mention mm -hmm. that at the same yeah. moment, um, I was 20 years old and I came back and then became his student assistant. Um, he had an advisor, scientific advisorship in the Susterberg Institute for Perception, a, a, an advanced research institute in matters of perception. Mm. So a big it, contrast with the psychology department. Uh, enormous, yes, enormous. Yeah, yeah. And, he, and he could appoint a half-time student mm. assistant mm. there to do his experiment, so to say. And he asked me to do this, mm. and I did. Mm. So I spent three years there as a student assistant, mm. going from one wonderful experimental project to mm. another, mm. And, and really learning mm. how to mm. do it all. Mm. In, both in audiology and in uh, mm. vision. Yep. Okay. Before we get into that, let me just go back then to Louvain. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and um, yeah. Uh, so there, yeah. I believe you uh, worked with Michot. Yeah, that was, yeah. Uh, and especially in retrospect, that was a fantastic experience. Mm. Um, when I had done my so-called candidate exam, which is the, 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 the first three years mm. of study, uh, at the Dutch University at the time, uh, I got a grant of the Dutch Belgian Cooperation Society, see, whatever, I and uh, I could go to Louvain for half a year. Yes. Um, and uh, this um, wonderful supervisor, John van der Geer, said, go to Louvain because there is Michot. And Michot is a great scientist. And so on his advice, I went there uh, and they accepted me for some reason uh, because I had never published anything <laughs> yet. Uh, and uh, I indeed spent half a year, almost half a year in his laboratory. Mm. And that was a fantastic experience. Mm. Uh, uh, he, he was himself a, a great supervisor, mm. uh, never imposing helpful, mm. uh, discussing mm. the experiments mm. carefully mm. and being nice. And sort of approachable. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I, yeah. I was invited to his yeah. home yes, yes, and, yes. and have yes. a little glass of vermouth. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> <That's a, laughs> but, but it was an important experience, uh, uh, if, if yeah. you would like to hear yeah. that. Yeah. Um, he had published in forty seven his a book, The Perception of Causality, or La Perception de mm. la Causalité. And I, in preparation, I had read that book. Uh, and that book is magnificent. Even now, when I read it, there is hardly any better book in experimental psychology wow. uh, in the history of our field. It's just That's great, lovely. beautiful, beautiful. We actually took his, uh, Michot's film his original films, we have copies oh, of them yeah. here in the, in oh, the yes. Institute. Yeah. Uh, yes. We feel yeah. out of curiosity. Yeah. Oh, yes. We, we, yes. we got exactly the result that yeah. you would expect. So, so there, yeah. um, um, he, he had, he was epistemologically, he, he was a um, Kant mm. um, right. person. Right. Right. <laughs> and, and Kant, of course, had said these, these, um, Cons concepts of causality and yes. permanence yes. And, and so on. Uh, deep in the human mind. Deep, deep in the human yes. mind. They, they, yes. they, they are not there, they are here. Yes. Yes. And, um, uh, and then Michotte's major project was to demonstrate that these 
these categories were innate in our perceptual mm. apparatus. Mm. Not just in mind, no, in perception. It's a really low level. Lo very low level. Yeah. So he, his mm. uh, cases of causality were yes, launching. That, that, those were the films that we took. Yeah, <laughs> and pushing, right? Yes. And, and yeah. these yeah. two, yeah. Uh, they're the basic yeah. cases in his view. Yes. And they um, have a property mm. which he called ampliation. And that is, in fact, that you see the, the movement of mm. the one object mm. continue in the other object. Right. And that's right. called ampliation. And that's a perceptual, uh, yeah. perceptual yeah. phenomenon. Yeah. And I, I had read the book and I thought, mm. oh, can I undermine yes, that yes, theory? Yes. Uh, and so I thought of. Uh, to study breaking, which is causal, of course. Right. One object breaks another. Right. Or, right. right? So, uh, and, uh, and he said, when I, I said, that is my plan. And he said, go ahead. I hope it will work for you. And he knew it wouldn't work. Uh, at least he thought it wouldn't work. And he gave me all the means, mm. these wonderful mm. devices mm. where you mm. paint a circle uh, a, a, a spiral oh, yes, yes. on a disc, and the and disc spinning. would turn, and there's a slot, and the spiral moves behind it, and then the point you see the point moving in the slot. I see, I see, that was the oh, way to create motion. Yes, and so I did all that, and yeah. and then in the end, he he would come by now and then. And did you did you manage? Do you have a case of breaking? And I said no, no. Continue. And in the end, I had one. So uh, what did this look like? So, so, yeah. so I put a fixed yeah. object in the yeah. midst of that, uh, of I that see. slot. I see. And that was another object coming, tum, slow, yeah. and then fast again. I so see. fast, yeah. slow, fast again. And when you show that to people, they then they all say this object breaks the other object. Oh, I see, in that sense, not breaking the heart. No, no, but no, no. Just, uh, no, oh, no. Uh, decelerates it. Decelerates. Yes, yes. Yeah, it was a motion. Yes, 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 and, and, they, and so they all said breaking. And so this was causality without ampliation. Yes. It was no longer the case that one object yes. transmitted its yes. speed to the yes, other yes, object. Yes, 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 yes. And, and then Michel got very interested. I see. And he, we worked together That's to it. sort That's this it. out. That's How it. could this That's be it. the case, etc. Yeah. He was a marvelous, marvelous yeah. supervisor. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And it was my first yeah. paper. And what's <laughs> nice about that is that he was himself um, the post uh, the postdoc of Wilhelm Wundt. Yeah, that is. And so an now you're back to your, your you know, I'm too favorite character. Uh, I'm two handshakes like away yes. <laughs> from Wilhelm Wundt. Yes, he was a postdoc in Wilhelm Wundt's laboratory in Leipzig yeah. uh, around, I think, 1906 or seven. Yeah. Yes. He was a young man. Yeah. And he told me firsthand stories mm. about Wundt. Yeah. <laughs> so, for instance, he didn't like Wundt. That, uh -huh. that was the uh -huh. first thing. Uh -huh. He didn't. Um, and, Boone didn't do much with him. Mm. Uh, he hardly ever sat mm. with Boone to discuss mm. his his uh, experiments. Mm. Um, mm. And, but then he, he described where Boone was always uh, teaching and giving mm. lectures in, in, in the major hall because mm. the, this hall was full, mm. really full, when Boone was teaching. Mm. He was a celebrity. Uh, and then uh, he told me that room had three doors, two small side doors and a double door in the middle. So then when Wundt was coming to teach, then first the side doors went open and two assistants walked to help him with whatever. And then the main doors opened and Wilhelm Wundt yeah, came the and actual. started. <laughs> <laughs> Michel didn't like all that. I see. Um, and and Michel then went for a second postdoc to Würzburg, 
to Kulpe. Okay, uh, Kulpe was the premis into Paris in the Wurzbuch School oh, of Psychology, and he loved Kulpe. Okay. Uh, and Kulpe was just totally different from, from Bund. And so what Michotte picked up uh, there was what was then called systematic experimental introspection. Mm. Uh -huh. yes, yes. So, yes. so you would, somebody would be given a stimulus, mm -hmm. would describe the stimulus, mm -hmm. and then you had the protocol, mm -hmm. the description, mm -hmm. and then afterwards mm -hmm. the psychologist would analyze mm -hmm. all these protocols mm -hmm. and come to some mm -hmm. conclusion. Mm -hmm. And that was Michotte's approach. Yes, yes. He would show these right, 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 things, right, right. and you had to just to say what you said, yeah. Ah, yeah. this one, the red one pushes the, yes, the black yes, one. Yes, yes, yes. And that is a protocol. Yes, yes, yes. And then he, what Michel did was analyze the protocols if there was a causal term. Push, I see. pull, etc. And that was yes or no. Yeah. A beautiful experiment. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Let's just pop back to Susterberg, so yeah. to, the, to the Institute yeah. for perception. So um, there you ended up uh, in vision. Uh, yeah. And audition, both. True. But, yeah. but the main right. work was in right. vision. Right. Yes, yes. Well, in your thesis, anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. 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 Which um, um, you told me that, uh, that that's something that has persisted. You still get citations. Oh, yeah. Yes. It's, it's yes. still much yes. exciting, yes. the dissertation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Initially, I didn't like the idea to write a dissertation on binocular rivalry. Yes. What is binocular rivalry? Yes. It's yes. this. Normally, you fuse the two images in on your two retinas, and that helps you see depth, stereopsis. Uh, but you can also make the two stimuli very different. So, for instance, vertical stripes mm. in the one eye, horizontal stripes mm. in the other. And they don't fuse. You do not see mm. a grid. You get a rivalry. Mm. You see, a, a few seconds, mm. you see the vertical stripe. Yes, yes, in a few yes. seconds, you see mm. the uh, horizontal stripes. It's, so that's, that is a bistable mm. person, mm. as mm. it's called. <clears throat> and uh, it had been studied uh, for over 150 years, mm. Wheatstone, and, but Nobody really know, knew what it was mm. and how it worked mm. and what the properties mm. were, and so uh, I I was the proposal of, of my director at that Institute for Perception was to analyze this for my dissertation, and in no time I I, I loved the subject, mm. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so yes I I guess I did some of the basic work and and mm. the basic statistics and so on. And that was closely tied to the issue of binocular brightness summation. Mm. If you have a bright mm. field in one eye and a dark field in the other, what is your total brightness impression? And that had never been measured. Mm. So I did all that. Mm. And that is now standard basic mm. stuff. It's yeah. real psychophysics. Yeah, real psychophysics. And, and, uh, <laughs> and you know, one of the things is that in the, the, that kind of field, you can get a kind of precision oh, that is uh, uh, very hard to achieve in higher mental capacities. Uh, you're so right. So n there have been moments when I turn to language that, oh gosh, yeah. I should have stayed in, <laughs> in psychophysics. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, it's so sharp. Yes, yes. yes. So, sharp. yes. Yeah. so therefore, whatever brought you to language? Because I think uh, yeah, there it were was early, right? You had some I had no, uh, n n nothing, no background. Yes. I had never. Uh, but in Susterberg, but you no, 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 not no. at all, not okay. at all, not at no. all. Um, except for one thing, they did have uh, George Miller's uh, perception. Uh, how it's called? His first. Um, yeah. um, Help well, there. it will. Yes. Yeah. Uh, his his wonderful 1951 book. Okay. Well, uh, they had that there, and I read that. Mm. But no, I had no background. The the, the 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 reason for me 
to go into this field was the following. I'd been in Louvain and then their wonderful other professor, Knops, was starting together with the linguistics department a, um, a uh, project or in fact a teaching course um, in psycholinguistics. I see. Uh, he was really ahead. I see. I mean, I see. Nobody was doing that. You could not get a degree in psycholinguistics yeah. anywhere in Europe. Yeah. And he had thought that up. And he, had, he, he knew Just Miller's work and yeah. so on. Yeah. He was really f uh, very, very uh, in well informed. Hmm. And, and so, and then, yeah, who should do this? No, that there were no psycholinguists. Hmm. Yeah. And then he came to me and said, Would you do it? And said, No. I, I I know nothing about language. Yeah. Uh, and he said, oh, that's all very simple. I'll give you a few books <laughs> 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 on psychology. I said, no, 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 no way, no way, no way. Uh, but he kept pushing and he knew everybody. He knew George Miller, among others. Uh, and I had planned to have a postdoc in the United States after mm. my promotion hmm. yeah. and um, so things came together uh, I said okay I would love to go to George Miller and to Harvard for a post of what, what better could you do but I'm not promising that I'm going to do this hmm. no way uh, <laughs> and he was helpful he was yeah. a marvelous yeah. person he was helpful and uh, so I I sent George Miller a letter, could I come? And George wrote back, no, you better go to to the department, not to my center for cognitive yes. studies. And I wrote back, no, I want to come to the center. And so, and then he said, okay, send me your publications. And I sent him a stack of publications and there came George's positive answer. But here, uh, Knops had helped. Yes. Uh, yes. So then, indeed, that's where I went. So I gave up my job in uh, Susterberg and went to the States. Yeah. So there you ended up at the Harvard Center for, for Cognitive Studies. Uh, yes. Where, which <laughs> was then uh, yeah. in a, you know, it was the Center for anti-behaviorism. Oh, oh, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> action. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> that center yeah. had been established in 1960 by, yeah. by uh, Jerry Bruder and, and George Miller um, to get away, so to say, from the department which was the behaviorist department mm -hmm. with Skinner and mm -hmm. Stevens and mm -hmm. those people. And they wanted to mm -hmm. develop a mindful psychologist, yes. uh, and so they did, and and so I ended up there, uh, and uh, it was an interesting place because there was not really a major research program, Brunner somewhat, um, but the idea of the place was let's collect bright young people and let them think it up themselves, and we will help. And, and, and organize things. Very enlightened, and, actually. Huh? Very enlightened. Very enlightened. Yeah. Uh, so, so, especially George, never, never imposed anything on me. He came by asking, what are you doing, and so on. But, uh, so the, the, the fun there was that there were all these bright people, and they, mm. that was my That's first. An extraordinary mid. stable, actually, right? I mean, if you were to list them. Uh, I mean, uh, just a few. Uh, 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 Don Norman, uh, um, um, Amos Tversky, um, um, George Miller, of course, Jerry Brunner, Jerry Fodor, Merrill Garrett, Jacques Miller, uh, and, and uh, you know, you can go on. Yeah, yes, yes, a it's long important. list of. Cats and Fodor. Uh, uh, yes, yeah, and, and they were. Uh, around then you yeah. talk to them everything yeah. was totally yes. informal yes. Yes. and uh, so that really shapes yes. 
So, so in the American sort of version of this, of course, this, this was the cognitive revolution. It, 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 it was just in its um, yeah. point of maximum impact. In a way. Yeah, well, yes, uh, that, that uh, certainly, uh, I think they did the right thing to set these people together and say, let's, let's think about the mm. mind. Mm. Let's think about mm. the mind. Uh, mm. Now, for me, that was all a bit funny. Because uh, <laughs> this cognitive revolution. Because I came, I came from Leiden University, and that was not a great place. But what had my psychology been? It had been a bit Gestalt psychology. It had been a bit mm. ethology. It had been a lot of phenomenology, mm. uh, and and so on. Yes. Uh, and mentalistic. Totally mentalistic, yes. yeah. and. I mean, uh, that much was innate, mm. was mm. just basic stuff. I mean, uh, and no behaviorism. Mm. I had no idea what mm. behaviorism mm. was about mm. even mm. when I came to mm. <laughs> So it was a bit funny to see all these people fighting yeah. behaviorism. Yeah. 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 Did you ever go to a Skinner lecture? Or no, you know? I, uh, and I should have. Yes, yeah, because he was on the next floor up or wherever. Yeah, yes. yeah. so I, I, I met him a few times. Yes. I didn't even talk to him in, in the elevator yes. of William James yes. Hall. Yes. <laughs> uh, I did go uh, and have some interaction with uh, Smithy Stevens, the behaviorist. Okay. Uh, uh, oh yes, the, the acoustic uh, 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 psychophysicist. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Uh, and he, he was yes. very bright, and yes. he offered me to come to his lab as well and do experiments. Yeah, he, and in fact, I tried to do some binaural additivity mm. loud and stuff, but his equipment was no, funny. Not, funny. <laughs> <laughs> not up to snuff. <laughs> yeah. Fascinating. Yeah. yeah. So now test ten because I I I was trying to see on the internet, you know, whether there were any George Miller uh, lectures or in, I, I can't, couldn't find any no, uh, no film lecture. or anything no. of him. Uh, so what no. was he like as a, as a man? I mean, he seems to have been a sort of quite quiet. But very quiet, reticent. But, yes. Uh, uh, yes. Very kind, very helpful. He would, he would come in into your office and, and then his intention was clearly to come and help you. But that's not what he said. Yeah. He would come in and say, Pim, I have a problem. <laughs> and then he would put something on the table and get my response. And then there was this beginning that's interaction that's about scientific stuff. Very clever technique, actually. You yes. remember that one. <laughs> yeah, yes. And yes. It's really yeah. beautiful. Yes. Really yes. beautiful. Yeah. yeah. But he did. He's, I mean, well, I have the feeling that he was the dominant force uh, compared to Bruner in the um, I I intellectual force in the um, center, or not, not fair? Well, look, I was in his yes, group. I there see. were two, we were divided mm. over the two. Yes. Uh, so I didn't have much interaction with Jerry, yes, Jerry Bruner, uh, and much more with, with George and his mm. people. Yes. Um, um, so, yeah. There were people telling me about what Jay was doing, mm. and he was mm. doing this work with babies, suddenly, mm. and they they were mm. would imitate him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, <Yeah. laughs> uh, but, but but I was not involved. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, no, um, uh, Eno Flores da Kais, mm. my good friend, right. was also there, right. and right. he was in in Jerry's group. Right. There were joint meetings. Uh, so, for instance, a person who came often to the joint meetings was Roman Jacobson. Oh, wow. Well, yes. <laughs> Him. <laughs> and at the time, yes. I didn't know what, what the yes. enormous... Yes. So now you were beginning to get into language because you couldn't avoid it. Now, no, of course. Oh, very much. Very much so. Very much so. Yeah. And, and, and of course, with my experimental background, I wanted to do something experimental mm. that would help mm. um, further mm. this issue that was very much um, on the table in, in George's group, the psychological reality of linguistic 
constructs are transformations really taking place yes. in your yes. head. Yes, yes. Is hi hierarchy yes. building, right. phrase structure right. building really going right. on in your heart, right. in your head? Right. So this yeah. was now. So the so Chomsky was the the background. All oh, of sure, this. sure, sure, uh, sure. So sure. and sure. there he was yeah. also. Oh, yeah. He was, and, yeah, he was not often in the center, but I used to go to his yes. uh, uh, lectures, uh, courses yes. in yes. Uh, at MIT. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Were they impressive? Yes, they were. The, 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 his and and Morris Halley's Morris Halley's courses were the the only linguistics courses I ever. <laughs> attended. So, Roman Jakobson didn't get a chance. <laughs> no, no, yeah, he, 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 that was Slavic yes, languages. Yes, uh, yes, uh, I, go yes, to yes, 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 yes. But, but I, I, I can tell you how these uh, lectures mm. went, uh, Chomsky's lectures. Um, there was this little audience, not big, 30, 40 mm. people mm. sitting there. And um, he would start. So mm. he, he was then working on his uh, history mm. uh, thing, mm. the, 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 the uh, French uh, developments uh, um, in um, linguistics in the 18th century. Uh, and so he would start almost reading. And after five minutes, some of the, one of the students mm. would raise his hands and ask a question. Mm. And he would answer, and another would raise mm. his hand, and he would answer. And in the end, it was only discussion. I see. So for each oh, of these lectures yes. was yes. only discussion. I see. I see. Yeah. And that m made them really interesting. Really yes, interesting. Yeah. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, and so Roger Brown was also around? Yeah, well, he had his own social psychology right. um, department uh, uh, in, in, uh, in the William James Hall, a bit higher up. Right. Uh, I did go there now and then to see people like Ursula Belucci. Yes. Ursula was doing her, or had just done, I, I just finished, I think, her dissertation on negation in child language. I see. And uh, so I, I came to yes. know her there, and we have been yes. in contact uh, yes. all of her yes. life. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Good. Now, um, so then, so let's just sort of follow follow your biography again. So mm -hmm. after that, you, you still stayed in the States. But yeah. You were there, I suppose, at the Harvard Center for just a year, was it? Two yeah, a full, one, full one, academic one. year. And then went on to, to Charlie, Charlie Osgood. Osgood in Urbana. Oh, Phil oh. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? Going well, to this no, die-hard behavior? Yeah, when yeah. <laughs> but of course, the, the, this is quite an experience. All this I had planned in my mind back home, without any background in linguistics I and see. in psycholinguistics. Uh, and uh, I had met Charlie Osgood at a Congress, mm. a psychology mm. Congress mm. In, in Denmark. Mm. And Charlie had published his phenomenal um, method and theory in uh, psychology, mm. a fat volume, mm. beautiful, beautiful. Mm. Uh, and that I learned some experimental psychology from when I was a student. I see, I see. Uh, a wonderful book. Mm. And so for, for me, he, he was a god. I see. Uh, and then he was also then working in psycholinguistics. I knew that mm. because he had published his mm. The Measurement of Meaning in yes. 1957, yes. where he, yes, that was work on his semantic differential, yes. Yes. whatever yes. that yes. is. Yes. Yes. And, and so I thought, well, He's another one I should see. Mm. Uh, mm. And I had asked him, could I come uh, and spend a, a postdoc in your mm. place? Mm. And he organized all that. He, he was a very kind man. Mm. And mm. He, he organized all that for me. So I, I became an assistant visiting professor there. I see. Yes. And I had to, to give courses in, yes. in, in English. And I my see. English was really 
primitive and I mean, it still is, but, but it, it has improved. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so, yes, I went to Urbana, Illinois for the winter semester. Mm. So I got there, I think, the, yeah, September, and right. I, I left in March, somewhere or mm. February, mm. February. And so there, there I, I went and we lived uh, on the campus in, in, the, in the student housing uh, and it was very cold. Right. Right. <laughs> and uh, you know, uh, my wife Elsa and I had taken our bikes from Holland on the boat. Uh, <laughs> So we were driving. <laughs> we, we were driving our bikes yes. through snowy, yes. snowy, yes. icy, urbana yes. Illinois. Yes. Yes. What did you make of this heartland of America? It, I mean, it yeah, is an it's extraordinary a, place. It, 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 this yeah. flatland, yes. and, and Charlie had accommodated himself to this yes. environment, yes. and he was about all the types of corn yes, oh, yes. and so he yes. he yes. had come to love I, that area. I spent the summer there <laughs> and, and there's a sacred plot of corn in oh, the yes. center of campus yes <laughs> yes yes, <laughs> yes. So yes. extraordinary but but yeah. so what did I do there it is still interesting because I didn't like his yeah. behaviorist yes. meaning theory and I didn't work on it but he had he was interested in s semantics uh, and he had done this book on the measurement of meaning and then later he got convinced by Weimreich that this was not really on semantics, mm. this was on, mm. on uh, affective mm. meaning. And then uh, Charlie tried to think up another means of discovering semantic features mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and he did something really intelligent he said okay what we should do is look into adjective noun combinations mm -hmm. uh, and some combinations are possible and other combinations are not very good mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. for instance um, eager expectancy it's fine. Hmm. Um, that's fine. Um, um, eager pain doesn't work. Hmm. Right? No, absolutely not. Um, yeah. But um, heavy pain. Yes. Separately. But e yeah. heavy expectancy is yeah. so so. Yeah. So, uh, so what did he do? He himself made judgments of these combinations in a 30 adjective by 40 noun matrix. Wow, yes, um, yes. Pluses, yes, minuses. Yes, yes. And so there was the matrix. But mm -hmm. how do you extract semantic features from? Mm. Because clearly features were working like mm. humanness or, mm. yes. or, uh, or mind, yes. uh, or mental or something. Mm. Uh, and so I spent that uh, semester on doing the mathematics of extracting features from such a matrix. That's, That's what I did. I uh, and later I, we, we extended that back home. Yes. And then Leo Nordman did some major Blessing. work on that. Yeah, yeah. So that was interesting. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Anyway, so then. Um, I think you went back to the Netherlands. By now, yeah. though, you're, you're committed to language or not yet? Uh, I, no, no. I, I, I always kept doing both. I see. Psychophysics and yeah. language. I see. I see. But, but indeed both. Yes. yes. So yes. I did not accept the Louvain offer, and that was n n not pleasant for them. And so to sort of do something, I... Um, offered them to be a visiting professor, I coming see. there to teach, I see. and I did. I see. Um, but then I had been offered in the meantime a, 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 a associate professorship at Groningen mm. University, mm. and I went there. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And so I could set up my own yes. lab, and I did indeed the two yes. things, both psychophysics, I see. doing work in binocular color mixture. 
I see. So a green patch here and a red patch there. Yeah. What yeah, you I see? Yeah, I see. Was still, you were still <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. a vision man, <laughs> yes, partly. Yes. Yeah. yes. But I also went on working on the technique I had developed at Harvard, uh, namely going back to my earlier remark, the cycle logical reality hmm. of phrase structures yes 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 I so see. what did uh, i yes. so oh, i, I try to measure yes how people perceive these structures so but i did a very simple thing have people judge the relatedness hmm. or cohesion between various words yes. in the sentence yes. mary went to school yes. uh, to and school Yes. are very cohesive, yes. high yes. relation. Yes. But Mary too, yes. Yes. no. Yes. So you can have yes. subject judge yes. the all pairs it's of relations. Phenomenology. Yeah, <laughs> it is. But then you can yes. again do the right yes. mathematics yes. and derive from that relatedness yes. matrix the uh, phrase structure, yes. and yes. that is what I developed. Yes, yes, and, yes. and we went on in Groningen yes. a lot yes. Yes. about yes. That, uh, hmm. that issue. But yes. then, unfortunately, 1968, student <laughs> revolution, uh, and uh, chaos. Total <laughs> chaos. This was a marvelous department mm. in Groningen. Groningen mm. is a beautiful city, mm. and we lived there, and we were really mm. happy with the family mm. having. Uh, <laughs> and then, um, uh, one morning I came into the institute uh, and the whole hall, everybody was standing there with sad faces. And I said, what's on here? What's on here? Well, the professor of psychology, Kauer, had suddenly died. Oh. He, he was running the department and the psychology institute. I see. Okay, and I was the associate professor, uh, and it was obvious I should take over as director of the institute. Unfortunate timing. And that would still have been okay. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I was, I think I was 29. <laughs> but anyhow, I, of course I said, that I, I said yes. Yeah. But then the students took this moment to begin their revolution. Yes. And they used this Institute for Psychology, which I was directing, mm. tried to direct, mm. <laughs> as, their, um, as their headquarters. And uh, so they were sitting around mm. and having meetings mm. and creating chaos in mm. the Institute. And I had my, my laboratory with all these very delicate mm. visual equipment, right? Standing around. Mm. And they would walk in with their wooden yeah. shoes and, and sort of sit on the tables and, and the, uh, the, the equipment shaking. Yeah. So it was impossible, yeah. impossible. Yeah. And then some of my colleagues in the department went along with them. And that was oh, I see. disastrous. Right. So the whole the the whole program t uh, so was glad. totally upset yeah. and uh, and y you were not allowed yes. to give lectures yeah. oh wow yeah yeah i still did yes and students came but i was not allowed to uh, and uh, and and uh, no exams yes uh, <laughs> and they would judge one another yes. <laughs> and and you you could earn um, um uh, points uh, by Cutting uh, uh, sugar corn in Cuba. Oh, of course. <laughs> anyway, you you escaped though. You uh, uh, you uh, Nijmegen offered you a, a chair. yeah. So was that? Uh, then two things happened almost at the same time. One was I got an offer for a professorship at Nijmegen University, and I got an invitation from D Duncan Luce, who was a member of the Institute for Advanced Study in Princeton. And Duncan had seen my mm. psychophysics work mm. and he invited me to spend a year 
yes, yes. fantastic yes. opportunity for you. So I Perfect. accepted yes. both. Yes, yes. So I, I accepted the uh, Nijmegen offer for a prof right. professorship on the condition that I could go to Princeton first. Right. Right. So all that happened. It was very, com very complicated. Right. But it worked. Right. So uh, uh, we moved to Nijmegen with some of my excellent staff mm -hmm. and with all the expensive mm -hmm. equipment. I see. Yes, <laughs> I see. <laughs> and then from Nijmegen, we almost immediately went to uh, yes. to Princeton. Yes. Yeah. yes. Uh, and uh, and there, of course, George Miller apparently, I think, had, uh, had moved. meanwhile moved. There. Yeah, he, he had been at Rockefeller and then he got the invitation from the Institute. They were considering setting up within the social sciences part right. of the Institute, uh, a psychology sub unit. And they had invited uh, George Miller and Duncan Luce. Mm. And, and that was a excellent, mm. the, the, the best people in the mm. country, um, with both with a mathematical mm. background, which was important in the Institute. Mm. And they mm. uh, could come for a tryout period of about five years, and they could invite young people to spend a year. Yes, and, they, and, and so Duncan invited me, not George, but Duncan. There's no teaching involved. This is pure, no, no, you're no, just no. meant to sit around no. and come up with great ideas. <laughs> That's right. That's yes. right. Yeah. <laughs> there were no computers any, uh, yes. at the time. Yeah. Yeah. So I know, I remember my, my <laughs> first day, I had a wonderful, beautiful office there. And there was my desk. And I brought several boxes of Dutch mm. cigars. I, I put them on the shelves. <laughs> And I sat down with a white piece of paper, and there, okay, what am I going to, to start? Yes. No, of course, I had a plan. I wanted to write a, 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 a book on um, formal grammars and formal uh, automata as applied to linguistics and to psycholinguistics. That was my plan. Mm. And so, yeah, I started mm. page one. Mm. <laughs> These are amazing books. I mean, uh, you know, three volumes. Yeah, uh, three uh, volumes. Very dense. I mean, partly. Uh, you, yeah. wrote, you wrote very beautiful English, I have to say, but I mean, it's yeah, just no, the material was a translation, is dense. Of course. Yeah, yes, yeah, I see. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I, see. I wrote it in Dutch. You wrote it in initially. Then, right. And then it got translated. It but, right. but yes. Uh, and, uh, but it, heavy material. It was heavy material. Heavy, so the my mathematics, I can hardly follow. I'm afraid <laughs> a lot of it. I cannot follow it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. the first volume is in, indeed on the theory of uh, the formal theory yeah. of grammars and automata. Yeah. Yeah. And you know that was hard also for yes. me, and yeah. I had to read all this right. pretty tough stuff. Right. And now and then I really didn't understand it, uh, but. I was in a very lucky situation. Next door to me in the Institute was Aravind Joshi. And Aravind Joshi was a mathematical linguist uh, uh, from, from uh, Philadelphia. Mm. And he knew all this by heart. Mm. Mm. So every time I, I, mm. I could solve mm. something, I could get the proof mm. done. Uh, mm. Uh, I went to him and, yeah. and he said, oh, <laughs> <laughs> and that helps. So, well, yes, so yes, I could really yeah. advance yeah. pretty yes, fast yeah. uh, writing yes. these books. Yes. Yes. But yes. indeed, I com completed all three of them uh, over the 10 so months. Quite years. shocking things in that book, though. I mean, uh, uh, <laughs> yes. like this proof that, um, that, yeah. uh, that yeah. Chomsky's aspect it is. wasn't what he thought it was, no. namely narrowing down the class of possible languages. Absolutely. But, uh, yeah. So the uh, so I had a few controversial things for, for linguists, controversial things. One was that I was introducing and using and showing the, the good use of probabilistic grammars. Yes, yes. Now, statistics was simply not done in linguistics no. at the time. It was a shame. 
yeah. to go yes. in statistics, well, you, in linguistic methods. Yeah, you think you even quote Chomsky saying what, that there is no place for, for a statistic. <laughs> a theory yeah. of probability. The, the, the is, there is no, no sense to the notion probability of that's a sentence. It, that's it, exactly. <laughs> yes. 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 Yeah. So that was the one th controversial yeah. thing, yeah. but the other one was indeed uh, the proof that Peters and Ritchie had given, excellent proof, mm -hmm. that uh, the um, um, aspects grammar yeah, that mm. Chomsky had produced in 65, mm. I think, um, was in fact um, had the power of a, a, a type zero um, language, the Turing machine mm. power, and was undecidable even. Mm. And <laughs> a thing that is undecidable is also unlearnable. Yes, uh -huh. I see. Mm. Right, right. So yes. the aspects grammar couldn't yes. be learnable. Uh, and so the consequences were yes. enormous. Yes. Uh, yes. And I yes. described all that yes. in the book yes. because yes. it was such yes. an yes. important yes. theory yes. that yes. had been proven. Yes. Yeah. So that made, well, the relationship with Chomsky a little bit complicated, shall we say. <laughs> yes, yes. yes. Uh, he, he, uh, at that time, he didn't respond to uh, my book. Yes, there was another controversial thing that is important. Chomsky had proven, quote unquote, in his syntactic structures that uh, natural languages were not regular languages, mm. type three languages, mm. uh, recursively innumerable mm. languages. They were at least type two. And his argument in uh, syntactic structures had been that languages have self embedding uh, structures, mm. right? right? right. Uh, and that showed that they could be uh, regular. Uh, now, the proof I discovered when I was doing the book in syntactic structures I is incorrect. Uh, because basically it said there are self-embedding structures mm. in languages, therefore languages are not regular. But that doesn't hold. If you take a regular language that produces all strings of the words in your linguistic vocabulary, all strings, then it also contains all self-embedding strings. I see, of course. So, it, I see. so, so the, the so fact that there are so self-embedding strings does not mm. prove that mm -hmm. grammar mm. is... In terms of grammar, uh, could be uh, randomly generated. No, we yeah, should. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I'm, I'm yeah. saying yes. that in the yes, book. Yes, yes, yes. yes. And, yeah. and, and then I, yeah. I'm providing another yeah. so-called proof, yeah. but a real proof, right. which is not my, uh, the, I didn't generate yeah. that, yeah. but, but uh, Hugo Brandt-Corsi is yeah. a, a mathematical yeah. uh, linguist here. Yeah. In, in, right. but, but I, I, so, and, and Chomsky uh, later, I had, mm -hmm. when I did my mm -hmm. history book, Chomsky responded very mm -hmm. nicely in mm -hmm. long emails mm -hmm. to me about that book. Uh, and, but there he says, uh, the proof is correct. My colleagues told me the proof is correct. It is not. <laughs> <laughs> For the record. <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah, one of the things I, I've always, in, uh, but I only found it very late in life, I have to say, is your uh, proof that uh, dependency, not proof, your demonstration that yeah. dependency grammar is actually much better. Much better. Yes, yeah. which is. Uh, yeah, that was one of the outcomes English, of. Which I don't think they know about, actually, no, most of no. them. Know. No. And so I'm, yeah. I have been surprised yeah. about linguists' responses to my yes. work because it is from these cohesion judgments yes. how related are elements yeah. in a sentence yes. that I could indeed show uh, quite explicitly mm. and formally mm. that dependency grammars mm. gave a much better mm. account mm. of these mm. cohesion mm. intuitions than than phrase structure yeah. grammars, yeah. and uh, I published mm. all that, and mm. the linguists were not mm. interested. Funny, isn't it? <laughs> the linguists are a fun lot. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. let's now come to Nijmegen yeah. because uh, 
um, you arrived as a as a professor here at university. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and um, I, by now, I, I suppose you're moving more into it. You're still, you're not still keeping the really yes. keeping still the yeah, yeah, so. okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then at some point, <laughs> yeah, this interaction for, with the Max Planck Society, yeah, so yeah. The approach, yeah. Uh, so, so you were sat, sitting on a on a committee, right? Yeah. Or well, the, it it was it went as follows. If if you want to hear it, yeah. Uh, so I from Princeton, I came back here right. to Nijmegen. Uh, and I was heading the experimental psychology department, and there was indeed both types of mm. work done: psychophysics yeah. and um, and uh, psycholinguistics. Um, and then, at a certain moment, after three years, I think, I got a letter, an invitation from the Max Planck Society to come to Munich to advise them on an initiative they were considering. To establish a project in in the in psychology and language, mm. and I said fine. So I came to uh, to uh, Munich for their meeting, and there was a, a committee sitting plus the president of the Max Planck Society, Weimar Lust, a wonderful man, and that committee consisted of uh, Jürgen. Uh, uh, Habermas, Habermas, yeah, yeah. And, and Edelstein, and uh, Detlef Ploek. Um, Edelstein was a developmentalist, and Detlef Ploek was a psychiatrist. And uh, there was um, Werner Reichardt, who was a, um, a, a biophysics I see. person. He, he worked on the movement detectors in the eyes mm. fly. Mm. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, uh, so, and they were the committee. Mm. Uh, and they were considering establishing something in the field of language and psychology. Uh, and uh, the I think the origin of these ideas was the relation of both Reichardt and Ploek to MIT Harvard. They had been Mm. around mm. all the time, mm. and they, they were good scientists. Mm. And they had seen this mm. language mm. stuff mm. suddenly blossoming. Yes, yes, yes. And, and so, uh, and what did they ask me to do? They asked me to give my opinion on a number of possible leaders of such an mm. enterprise. Mm. Uh, and they gave me mm. several names, mm. and I responded mm. uh, honestly, uh, mm. well as I could, most of them I knew. And, uh, and so that was it. Mm. Uh, and so I went home <laughs> again. <laughs> and then about five months later, Werner Reichert, who, who chaired that little committee, uh, called me, could he come by to talk to me and see my lab and so on. And I thought, oh gosh. <laughs> so he came over to Nijmegen and I showed him our, our lab mm. and the, wor mm. the work we were doing and so on and so on. And then he met, said to me, okay, would you be interested in starting this enterprise? Mm. And that was the beginning mm. of the mm. whole thing. Yes. Wow. Yep. So you got the chance. Um, it yes. started in yeah. 76. Yeah, 76, the decisions had been taken, very complicated, because it was the first time the Max mm. Planck Society mm. went over mm. the German border. Mm. Uh, that mm. was quite mm. something. Yes, uh, and German taxpayers' money on the other side of the border. Sure, sure. Mm. And, and you know, when a new enterprise begins in the Max Planck Society, it is established in one of the countries, one of the mm. lender. Yes. And here they I would see. have to pay for yes, the enterprise, yes, yes, yes. but not get it. Yes, yes. yes. Right? So the Dutch had to pay, the yes. Londoners on yes. tile, and, yes. and so on. And they did. Mm. Uh, but it was not easy. No. It was certainly yeah. not Very easy. Very complicated. Yeah. It always has been, I think. Yeah. Being <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Uh, but it worked. Yeah. It worked. Yeah. 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 So, um, the uh, so then the, the group started. It was a project group to start with. Yeah, it was a tryout group right, for five right, years. Right. Yeah, and then you recruited Wolfgang Klein rapidly uh, uh, right away. Um, I, I needed 
a linguist and a German linguist. Right. That was right. totally clear to me. Yes. Yes. And and he was he was a Bundeskind, mm. <laughs> yes. Yes. and and, uh, uh, and indeed he, he he was excellent. He had wonderful ideas that I'd never mm. thought of. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I I asked him, was he willing to spend a large part of his working mm. week mm. with us mm. here in Nijmegen to develop this whole mm. thing? And he did. Mm. And of course, we had to get accustomed to one another, mm. and, and it's all interesting and complicated. Mm. Yes, but it worked. It yes. worked. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, when did you start to sort of get the ambition to write this extraordinary? Yeah, that that was really later. After, uh, so after we had become an institute, mm -hmm. and that was 1980, the okay. first of January 1980, right. the project group right. turned into. Right. An institute, uh, so I, I was the founding director, but Wolfgang quickly followed mm. a few months later. So the two of us began mm. the Max Planck Institute, and uh, we had long discussed what we how we should divide the the work, mm. and um, um, it was clear that we should have a department. Um, running, uh, studying the production of language, and that was my specialty, another department studying the comprehension of language, mm -hmm. and a third one studying the acquisition mm -hmm. of language. It's a very logical yes. design. Yes. And um, so then mm -hmm. my main job was to develop mm -hmm. uh, the... But I think I'm right in saying that really the great bulk Perhaps the entirety of psycholinguistics at the time was on comprehension. Yeah, on that, that is really an inter mm. that, that's a good observation. It it, is, it certainly was. Uh, so also at the Center for Cognitive Studies, almost all, not all, but almost all was comprehension mm. work. Mm. <coughs> Those work on speech errors and that's mm. production, mm. of course. Um, Merrill mm. Garrett, for instance. Right. Uh, mm. But but most of the work was in perception and in memory. Mm. Mm. Um, sentence memory and that sort of thing. Uh, and um, so for me, uh, but that was an interesting aberration mm. because in the whole history of psycholinguistics from, from the late 18th century up to the Second World War, mm. almost all the work was on mm. production, mm. not on, on comprehension. Mm. Mm. All production, mm. also all the behavioristic work uh, in, in, during the first half of the right. 20th century right. was right. on production. Right. So Skinner's verbal True. behavior True. <laughs> is only about yes. production. Yes. Um, so mm. it, it was after the, the Second World War, it was this new field of information theory mm -hmm. and, and communication mm -hmm. theory that had been developed for practical reasons mm -hmm. during the war mm -hmm. that really turned mm -hmm. the tables mm -hmm. to comprehension work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I knew that and mm -hmm. I knew that there was a niche. Yes. Production was a niche. Yes. And yes. when you start such a big enterprise, mm -hmm. you better have a niche mm -hmm. where you can work quietly mm. Uh, mm. and develop things mm. and everything you do is new and is interesting mm. and so on. So on the other uh, hand the methods uh, uh, there were lacking. <laughs> there, there was an yeah. enormous fragment. Yeah. So yeah. The, the only real method in the study, almost only method at the time was speech error analysis. Mm. Mm. And they did wonderful things, mm. uh, important things. Mm. Um, uh, um, there was also some work on speech hesitations, mm. pauses. Right. Uh, Charlie Oswald had worked on that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. yeah. But, but yeah. what was totally absent was any experimental means of studying the time course of the production of mm. an utterance. Mm. There were no ways of doing mm. this, and that is what we developed mm. here. Yes. So, right after 
we started this, uh, we started developing mm. uh, experimental mm. methods mm. for the study of production. And they should be methods that would not throw away half of the process because some work had been done, not by us, uh, where they had people read. Yeah, then of course you produce. Yes. Well, of course, this was the initial puzzle. How do you get anybody to say sure, what you want them to say? Sure, yeah. sure. And, and the, the, the general belief, and Chomsky's belief explicitly formulated here and there, was that's impossible. Mm. Uh, mm. We are free to say mm. what we want. Yes, exactly. So I cannot yeah. decide as an experimenter what you are going to say. Yes. Uh, now, he was wrong. It's possible to do that. Yeah. And the whole methodology we developed here mm. was just that. Mm. Mm. Have people say the things, yeah. spontaneously mm. say the things mm. we want mm. them to say. Mm. Mm. And that was fun mm. to develop mm. that. Mm. Yeah. So in the book, I mean, you go right from the sort of beginning. I'm going back to the book now. Oh, but just okay. um, uh, to the, you know, beginning uh, of uh, regimenting the chaotic thoughts to get them into the form that, <laughs> that can be channeled through into this kind of yeah. machine yeah. for um, uh, yes. output. So you be, uh, I, I think there's an initial chapter that's extremely interesting, but, uh, um, but of course there really still isn't a science of that part, is there? Uh, what do you think? Yeah. Uh, uh, well, so the, I think, well, after the, the first two or three mm. years, I decided to write mm. a book mm. uh, because that was the only way for me to get the whole system mm. in my hands, mm. to get the mm. grip on the whole mm. process. Uh, and um, so I did two things and that produced the book. Mm. One was get a general schema of the process. Mm. Hypothetical, mm. yes, mm. but at least mm. you should consider what all would be needed to produce mm. an utterance mm. and how these different components mm. that mm. had to do the work mm. would be talking mm. to one mm. another. Mm. That was step one. That was not a difficult step because others had been thinking about this a lot, like Merrill Garrett. Mm. And, and, and like uh, Brian Butterworth, yes, for instance, right. uh, his yes. two volume yes. uh, edited mm. books on, mm. on production. So there was quite mm. some work. Mm. And so the major components had been mm. labeled mm. already, like uh, conceptualization, mm. uh, like um, what I then call uh, grammatical encoding. Mm. Garrett had called that the functional level, right. <laughs> but that's the same. Yes. Phonological encoding, right. Right. articulation, right. Right. and then, of course, the involvement of our perceptual right. system. We right. listen to our own speech, yeah. right? So we can sort of correct error and so on. Yes. Yeah. So those components had yes. been laying yes. around. So I made this schema, uh, um, the, which I call the blueprint. Right. <laughs> and the schema is in the book, and it has been copied a million times mm. in the literature. Yes, yes. <laughs> and so it had these components. Yes, yes. And then that was issue one. Mm. And that was the easiest part. Mm. The diff mm. more difficult part was to define the inputs and the outputs, the input mm. representations and the output representations for each mm. of these mm. components. Mm. So, for instance... It's really a flowchart, wasn't it? It's a flowchart. It's a flowchart. Flow flow component so one, component yeah, two, component yeah, three. Yeah, 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 right. Yeah. So, take grammatical mm. encoding. What's the input? The input is a conceptual structure, mm. the thing you're going mm. to formulate. Mm. What's the output? The output is a surface structure, mm. right? Mm. A syntactic structure. Mm. So you had to think up first what kind of representations go mm. in mm. explicitly mm. and what kind of representations mm. go, mm. What, what are surface structures mm. like and mm. how should you formalize them? Mm. And second, you had to think up an algorithm that would map the input mm. representation on, on the, the output representation. Right. 
And there were many suggestions mm. in the literature, mm. loose suggestions mm. hanging around in mm. different disciplines mm. even. And so that was one major aspect of what I mm. had to do, mm. define in and output mm. representations mm. and the algorithms mm. that would mm. transform the one mm. into the other. Mm. The other thing is these components talk to one another, mm. the output, the surface structure, mm of the uh, grammatical encoding component mm. um, should be uh, given to the mm. phonological encoding component mm. because that should map the surface structure on the phonological code. Right. Right? And that phonological code should later be transferred into a phonetic yes. articulatory yes, code. Yes. So the output of one component had to be the same format as the input mm. to mm. another component. Mm. That was a restriction mm. on representations, mm. in and output representations. Right. So that I did very explicitly. Mm. That is what I mm. wanted to do. And then after having built up this whole system with potential, potential algorithms for each mm. of the components, mm. and I really proposed algorithms mm, mm, for each mm. of them. And they, some had been laying around mm, and others mm. I had to think of. Mm. Then comes the other question, what is the experimental evidence yes. or how other evidence know, <laughs> that <laughs> these are right. uh, correct? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so then I related this whole thought up mm. system to mm. what empirical evidence there mm. was around, mm. both in speech errors very much mm. in speech as, mm. but also in um, in uh, chronometric mm. experimentation, mm. my own in, in particular. Uh, and so that that was what I did in the book. Mm. Yeah. And then there was this this, this yeah. section on monitoring, the, yeah. the last yeah. component. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Us listening, uh, yeah. listening to ourselves yes. and being able to correct and correct ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. So that that was yeah. it. Yeah. 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 So in, act, in actual fact, sort of heart of the book, in a way, is the lexical access yeah. component. The, yeah, so... Now uh, you need to get hold uh, of yes, the Yes, you're right. The yes. word. <laughs> yeah, good, good, you mentioned yeah. that. In, in sort of developing this, it was not there right away. Mm. In de developing this, I got more and more convinced of the idea that the, the core business mm. here was lexical uh, programming. Mm. That is first coming from concepts, mm. ideas you yeah. have, mm. to lexical items mm. that had a particular meaning and a particular syntax. Mm. That is, they want to combine in this and that mm. way mm. with other words mm. in a sentence. Mm. Mm. Uh, so all that very crucial core information is in the lexical items. That was, that idea had been expressed mm. in the literature mm. in several ways, mm. and, but that became a leading principle in the, mm. in the book. Mm. Mm. So lexical access, therefore, finding, activating the appropriate word in your lexicon, mm. and then retrieving all its properties mm. in order to create its phonology and articulation. Right, right. They that, all hang off in a sense. That's the, right. The yeah. word. So yeah. that that is yes. that that was the idea. Yeah. 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 So you, you went on, I think, about ten years later to yeah. uh, sort of develop all of yeah. that further. Yeah, that yeah, that was an yeah. enormous thing. Yes. Yes. So so and, and that is not me in the first place, that, that is my excellent students. <laughs> so I had really great mm. students. When I started mm. doing this, slowly but mm. surely, I mm. got these brilliant young people mm. who could do the, these mm. chronometric mm. experiments mm. and develop the, the methodology. Mm. Yes. And we did it all together. Yeah. Yeah. And so among them, Antje Meyer, yes. who is now a director yes. here, and, and Herbert Schrievers, yes. who invented the, um, the um, picture 
spoken word I interference see. paradigm, oh, right. which is right. the dominant yes. experimental yes. paradigm yes. Yes. till the present day yes. Yes. in production yes. research. Yes. And Herbert Schrievers and Antje Maher together yes. Yes. thought this up. Yes. Um, yes. And then very, very importantly, Arne Rulofs, uh, all by himself. I have not been helping there because it was too, too difficult for me. Did the computation mm. modeling mm. of this mm. whole yes, yes, theory. Yes. Mm. And that was brilliant work, mm. really brilliant mm. work. So then we had this very productive mm. small group, Schrievers, Meyer, uh, Rulos, and a few others. Mm. And uh, not a few. Quite a few. Quite a few. Quite a few. Uh, in fact, the uh, PhD <laughs> students. <laughs> in fact, in my in yeah. my autobiography, yes. I took care to mention yes. all of them. Yes. Yeah, that's a lot of yeah. So, but anyhow, uh, then uh, I thought, okay, we now un understand a lot more. Mm. I should sit down and write it all up. Mm. So I wrote, but then of course, in in steady interaction mm. with the others. Um, that uh, uh, target paper for BBS. BBS. Yes, yes. Uh, 1999, I think. 1999 yeah. it appeared, and it gives the full theory on lexical access mm. from a conceptual start mm. to mm. the articulation mm. of mm. the word mm. Mm. and the self-monitoring mm. that mm. could follow. Mm. And that whole process goes to several steps, mm. uh, six, seven, eight steps. Mm. And we had done all the experimental work mm. for all these steps, mm. and we knew how much time each mm. phase mm. would take, Amazing roughly. Yes. And, and yes. it was yes. fantastic yes. to yes. do yes. such research. Yes. You yes. need the Max yes. Planck Institute. Yes. <laughs> um, so so yeah. and so we published that, and it, it has become a citation classic. Of course, yeah. Daily, it's yeah. daily cited yeah. Yeah. now. Yeah. What? Uh, Ten years later. Yes. Fourteen years later. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes. So um, I think that I, I was thinking about comprehension versus production. Um, yeah. And this is part. I mean, you, you were lucky in a way in your choice. Because uh, yeah. because speaking has to be somehow uh, linear in some fashion, yes. whereas yes. understanding yes. seems to be really yes. massively parallel uh, yes. Uh, yes. and in a way much harder yes. to know what's happening yes. when. Yes. Uh, uh, yes. So yeah, you're right. I think mm. um, the advantage of the speaking system is that it, in a way, must be to mm. a major extent modular. Mm. Mm. Uh, mm. You have to to do operations mm. in some very tight sequence mm. so that you can linearize mm. the output. Yes, yes, yes. Right? Yes. Produce the mm. syllables mm. of mm. the mm. whole mm. sentence mm. with the intonation mm. everything. And um, so you cannot skip mm. uh, any of the stages. Mm. Uh, uh, you can do that. No, then no, there's no speech, no, no, right? Sorry. So uh, it's yes. a very nice yes. system. Yes. It, it, yes, it, it, it has something obligatory yes. in it. Yes. And that's right. much less the case in perception. Yes. There is good yes. enough perception. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. And you can sort of handle it. Yes. Uh, but not in speech. Yes. You have to produce that utterance. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And it needs all yeah. its yeah. Yeah. details. Yeah. The current trend is to sort of emphasize the overlap between comprehension and production, yeah. Yeah. which strikes me as a little bizarre because, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it yeah. Yeah. Seem, I mean, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah it's, well, that's a good point. Yes. And of course, this has been around, this yeah. argument. Yeah. It isn't uh, production just a reverse of perception? Yes, yes. Well, of course it isn't. Yes. Yeah, there are commonalities. Mm. We are using probably a similar, the same conceptual yeah system yes. and we are maybe largely using the same mm. grammar mm. Mm. Um, but of course um, when you produce a word you must plan the articulation mm. Mm. of the thing yes. Yes. and 
not in perception. Articulation is can be totally irrelevant. Yes. It can play a role, but it is not essential yes. Yes. to the perception yes. of speech. Yes. And reversely, um, when you listen to speech, you must do the auditory analysis in much detail, mm. otherwise you won't understand the yes, word. Yes, yes. Not important in production. No. Not sure important. The right word. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you produce it. Yes. You don't have to. Uh, yeah. So, so yeah. Th that is really yeah. wrong yeah. to say that the one is the reverse of the other. Yeah. But of course they are closely related mm. in many mm. respects. Mm. And that has not been sufficiently studied. Mm. And I'm so happy to see now in this institute that after we had had a production mm. department and a comprehension mm. department and Cutler's department mm. in the end, uh, now in Antje Meyer's department, the two aspects are jointly studied yes. also in their interaction. Yes. Yes. And that is very interesting mm -hmm. stuff. Now tell me something, because this interests me, is just um, thinking about language difference. I mean, you, you consider it um, here yeah, and yeah. Uh, also... Some uh, yes. Um, but um, but uh, we might come back to that a little bit about how, uh, how all these different languages are meant to be processed by, I'm presuming, the same sort of machine. Yeah. And now the question I'm, I'm yeah. sort of interested in is, where do you stand on how much of this machinery is built in, as it were, to yeah. the species. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. well, mm. th that is, of course, uh, the core yes. question yes. in our field, uh, how much is built in. I have always mm, found it pretty obvious that a lot has mm. been built mm. in. Uh, we should have thought that. Yes, of course. But, <laughs> and I, I keep thinking yes. that for a language. Yes. Yes. Uh, that, doesn't mean, of course, mm. uh, that the other, the other factors are irrelevant. Mm. On the contrary, mm. and I mean, without mother tongue, you will never acquire a language. Mm. Uh, mm. And the mother tongues are terribly different, as you mm. have <laughs> shown so clearly and convinced me of. Mm. Because initially, I thought, oh, they, they're probably all the same. No, they are not. <laughs> you told me, uh, and. Uh, so, how much is common then in the production system? Now, I do think that these main components that we distinguish, mm. conceptualization, mm. grammatical encoding, mm. phonological mm. encoding, preparing mm. the articulation, mm. are around in, for all the languages, mm. except the articulation is different for sign, for sign languages, yeah. of course, and uh, which is an interesting case, yeah, of course. Extraordinary. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. But but yeah. otherwise, I I think yeah. th they they are quite probably all around for yes. all languages, yes. Whatever, yes. however different yes. they are. So, yeah, yeah. So there's a strong. Um, yeah, but then but then the differences come. Each of the components yeah. has a different input and yeah. output representation yes. Yes. for yes. different yes. languages. Yes, yes. Yeah. yes. Oh, sure. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes. So also different algorithms for translating inputs of components to outputs right. of components. Right. So all that is very right. interesting right. cross-linguistic right. stuff right. to be right. done. Right. Yeah. yeah. So um, a lot of this work, uh, all of this uh, uh, work, so had a chronometric basis really yeah. right yeah, yeah, so good yeah, old yeah. rts yeah yeah, yeah, yeah sure, sure. were the kind oh, yeah. of core that was of your, our main method yeah yeah, yeah. which is yeah. Um, kind yeah. of interesting when you yeah. Uh, yeah. now look back at it uh, yeah. how much you can do uh, with a it's with a, a way a primitive it's uh, amazing. Method. It's amazing. yeah there, there is i think apart maybe from from uh, neuropsychological mm. measures mm. there's no be better mm more precise method mm. in all of psychological mm. methodology. Mm. I mean, you can get significant differences mm. of two, three mm. milliseconds mm. Uh, on which you can base your theoretical mm. conclusions. Mm. Yes. A wonderful technique yes. Yes. invented by a Dutchman. Yes. 
Dumpers. Dumpers in Utah. Yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, um, is that true? Because I remember, it's one of the few things in the history of linguistics, uh, psycholinguistics that I read is a, a book by Boring. Oh, yeah. History of psychology, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, in which he claims astronomers invented uh, reaction. Time, yeah, well, uh, true, true. Yes. That, the, uh, <laughs> it's the personal difference or something. Yes, uh, yes. Yeah, the, the, uh, the, yeah. the issue yeah. was in. Well, regard. he's right. Yeah, and yeah. and, and Donders knew that. Yes, yes. Uh, it so. had been around yes, in literature. Yes, yeah. 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 yeah, yes, yes, yeah. 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 Well, yeah. I see. Um, Lots of other questions I'd love to ask you, but we um, we must bring things to a, to a close soon anyway. Um, let me just ask you a little bit about um, um, yes, yeah, so the brain. So uh, yep. um, uh, I I remember having this uh, interaction. It was with Miranda Van Turen, actually, yep. who, you know, and of course, who said to me, yeah, yeah. Uh, "Oh, Steve, <laughs> uh, you know, that's now how it works." She was, you know, I was, uh, I suppose, talking talking some flow chart or something about what was happening in the mind. Yeah. Uh, and, um, and indeed, it's a challenge, of course. The brain is a vast challenge. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, so I have been in the lucky situation that late in my career, these neuroimaging methods mm. came mm. up. Mm. Um, uh, EEG had been around mm. for, uh, mm. since decades, mm. but um, not MEG, not mm. Uh, fMRI mm. and they came uh, around sort of early 90s mm. uh, and I tried to jump on, mm. on the mm. bandwagon mm. Uh, and I, I did to some extent so we uh, had so I had developed together with these great young scientists this this chronometric theory of the stages of mm -hmm. word production mm -hmm. and so we knew which subsequent windows in time mm -hmm. would be occupied mm -hmm. by mm -hmm. the different mm -hmm. processes and then the obvious thing to do was go to an MEG apparatus and measure MEGs while people are naming doing your pictures. classic tasks essentially. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So the task yeah. we had developed yes. and, and yeah. mastered yes. so well yes. Yes. by the time. Yes. Use them in the yeah. MEG now. There was yeah. no MEG appar apparatus around yeah. except for in Helsinki yeah. where they had developed the whole I thing. See. See. And so I wrote to <laughs> Rita Salmelin, could I come by? and do an experiment on picture naming. And uh, she said, fine. Uh, now we had, of course, we needed Dutch subjects yes. who, right? We knew how the experiments would yes. work in Dutch. So we did all the preliminary experiments with a whole, <laughs> a whole lot of Dutch subjects here mm. uh, in the Institute. And then uh, put all these subjects in a plane flew to Helsinki. Extraordinary, <laughs> actually. <laughs> Max Planck so that. Yeah, so yeah, so yeah. It was a grand, grand gesture, <laughs> yeah. if, it, if it had all failed. <laughs> so so yeah. we yeah. did all the experiments with yes. the Dutch yes. subjects. Yeah. They, they had a nice outing to yes. Helsinki. Yeah. And, uh, and so that became our first yeah. uh, yeah. neuroimaging yeah. yes. paper yeah. where we try to relate yeah. the stages yes, yes. Uh, that we had discovered yeah, yeah. to activities in yeah, the brain. Yeah. And that developed further. Yes, and yes. later I worked on that with uh, Peter in the Vrij. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. Peter and I then did uh, a, a major analysis mm -hmm. of whatever was non, uh, known about mm -hmm. um, uh, MEG and MRI in production, mm -hmm. uh, and that paper we published in 2004, and that's another citation, another citation classic. classic. Yes, I yeah. myself use it. Uh, but in the end, I didn't do much in the field. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I was too late in the Yes, way. yes. Yeah. 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 Let us turn, before finishing, just to your 
history of psycholinguistics. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, so uh, this was an amazing undertaking. I remember actually um, yeah. watching these, um, uh, you know, ancient books written in this dreadful or typed in a uh, uh, printed in this dreadful fracture that would pass across your desk. This is <laughs> yes. general uh, 19th century German <laughs> print. <laughs> Oh man, how you're yeah. going through all of this and, and, yeah. and getting your head inside yeah. uh, the, you know, what those yeah. ancient yeah. guys. I am so and happy because this was a joy. Really? It was yeah. a joy. It was really? not, yeah. it was sometimes difficult yeah. as in the first place. Really? Yeah. I had learned to read Fak Tour in high school. Oh, really? I yes. See. I so I, I mastered it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could, yeah. I could read yeah. it yeah, 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 yeah. without yeah. much problem. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so yes. Yeah. Uh, but anyhow, um, uh, I had always been interested in the history of my field, also mm. the history of vision. Mm. Mm. So, for instance, in my dissertation, mm. there is a law of complementary shares. And it goes back to Herring, 1860. Okay. Yes, and yes, I had yes. seen that. I yes, knew yes, that. Yes, yes, yes. So I'd always done that. Mm. But then, of course, I, when my, uh, the end of my, my uh, directorship here in the mm. institute was, was mm. coming in the offing, I had to decide what to do mm. next. And I, I knew I mm. want to work on the history. Mm. So I did, and that's nice. You can mm. work on the history. All alone, mm. me, not no, guide students. In this case. Uh, and I, no, no, no. So yeah. I, I wrote that yeah. book yeah. in Amsterdam. Yeah. I moved to yeah. Amsterdam, and I was sitting in my yeah. office, looking into the gracht yes. <laughs> and, and, and writing. Yeah. And then the institute was fantastically helpful to getting all these old books that had yeah. never been checked out, probably. checked out <laughs> of the libraries, and, and then. Yeah. Uh, one or two weeks, yeah. I had them yeah. on my desk. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, yes, I yeah. was reading all this. Yeah. And yeah, it, of course, I had to get more accustomed to reading these fat German books. Mm. Most of them were in German, mm. but some in French and some in English, mm. uh, but, but most of them were in German. Mm. Uh, and um, Great German 19th century powerhouse. Enormous, yes. enormous. Yeah. And the 19th century, and that's my sort of my mm. general view mm. on this, the 19th century for our field mm. was so much more interesting than the 20th century, really, at least up to the Second World War. Yeah. Yes. Uh, they mm. were mm. thinkers mm. and mm. they could sit on mm. the theory mm. over a long period mm. of time, mm. wound didn't mm work like that. Mm. Helmholtz worked mm. like that. Mm. Uh, and, and and so on. Uh, and the linguists, mm. the linguists mm. were sitting on their yes. flat mm. books over long mm. periods of time. Mm. Mm. And Brugman and mm. uh, you know, all, yes. all of them. Yes. And these are wonderful books to read. Mm. Uh, mm. So it was a pleasure. Yes. Uh, it was a pleasure. So I took these fat yeah. books with me on vacations, yeah. uh, yeah. sitting yeah. on the beach. <laughs> 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 no, it was it was a great pleasure. Yeah. Yeah. And and then what was the experience? Of course, I had topics that I mm. had to write mm. on, uh, in particular mm. the different subfields mm. like acquisition mm. and and. Mm. and and experimental mm. uh, psycholinguistics and brain mm. uh, psycholinguistics and so on. And um, uh, um, I would then study mm. the different authors that mm. were working on this within a certain time frame, right? For instance, early in the 19th century. And what well, it's a limited number of mm. people, mm. and when you read their, their books, and it was mostly books, then at a certain moment you discover that you're really seeing the issues that were around. Because 
they were responding to one another yes, on a limited number of issues. Yes, and that's interesting because then you become one of them. Yeah. You start that's talking to them. You start talking. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, but you said that and he said that. Yes. That cannot be both. Be, you know, that yes. sort of situation. Yes, yes, yes. And as soon as you reach mm. that mm. stage, mm. then you can start writing. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And yes. so that is the way it went. Yes. It was a very yes. nice you're, experience. You're a closet anthropologist, uh, really. <laughs> you surely, <laughs> yes. I, I never heads. called it. <laughs> yes. But, but you're so right. You're so right. Yeah. 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 Well, Pim, there's lots more we could talk about, but yeah. I think we're probably um, suddenly uh, at lunchtime. And uh, <laughs> so let, thank you very much. Uh, uh, I think this was uh, very interesting. I enjoyed it. And uh, I'm sure generations of further psycholinguists will listen to it. Let me thank you, Steve. Uh, starting all this, uh, it, it is a lot of work to really get into somebody's mind yeah. Yeah. and <laughs> ask interesting questions. And uh, I'm very grateful that you did Good. this. Thank Good. you so much. Good. A pleasure. <laughs>